Good morning, everyone. As I mentioned yesterday, then, um, so I'm just going to go over some of my bags that I, I used um, during the GB Duro. Um, I'll get them open uh, shortly. We'll have a look at what's inside. Um, kind of looking forward to that, maybe. It probably stinks a bit, some of it. Um, so we'll have a look what's in there. Um, I've got some of my bags down here. There's a couple still on my bike, but um, I'll discuss them uh, as and when. But we'll, we'll dig into them. Uh, and I'll sort of say pros and cons about them. Um, if I think they're any good, uh, would I use them again? And sort of the price really, because a lot of my stuff is it is you know sort of entry level uh, for bike packing and that. But it, it sort of you know it lasted um, the whole uh, duration um, of the GB Duro, and, and I used it in the build up etc. Before, um, so yeah, really that uh, I'll, I'll just talk about that and um, you know where you can find these uh, products and, and items etc. Uh, so yeah, let's just dive right in uh, and pick out some of the bags. Okay then, so let's, we'll dig right in then. Uh, I'll start with uh, my frame bag. I've sort of got a full, um, like, you know, as in the top tube, full size frame bag is in length, not a full frame pack like a lot of people were running. I, I went for this because, um, to be honest, I prefer using water bottles to a camelback. Uh, I like to be able to see um, what water I've got left and so then in my head I know you know all right I need to get more water because uh, as mentioned before on the, uh, this time the GB Duro we had to source our own water etc so that was obviously an important uh, factor in um, you know my thought process in, in what sort of a kit and equipment that I would use so I use this one which I got from uh, Alp Kit uh, I believe it's about 35 pounds I'll double check the price shortly but I believe it's about 35 pounds uh, for this bag but uh, definitely definitely um, worth the, the money um, a fantastic piece of kit uh, and would highly uh, recommend it so yeah so uh, my frame bag then it, it comes with uh, you know you get four sort of straps of it and there's various various points where you can put it onto the frame etc but it is it's completely waterproof it gives you little uh, cool little features like a little gap there so you can run cables out if you you know you're trying to charge or you know from a power back or something from there and it's got two zips it's not uh, open both sides it's two separate compartments so um on this side then i'll we'll see what's in here now still a bit carrying a bit of dust and stuff from the trip uh yeah let's sort of a dig in so things i've got left in here chamois cream that oh, that was important for me work to treat bit of sun cream yeah again very important that has stopped me from burning uh, i mean one would have sold me off if i didn't use it i did for some reason take a, a little bite lock um I, I didn't obviously need it because we weren't stopping anywhere but i always carry that uh, you know it's not it's not an amazing thing but uh it, you know it's just there to, as a deterrent more than anything if you are stopping at all so i did have that in there just a bit of extra weight extra straps because you never know if something's going to go wrong black tape i had my uh, trusty leathermans uh, and purely had that because it's a multi-tool multi-purpose good set of pliers on there uh, and this was actually given to me by a good friend uh, chris who was still out while i was riding so that was it was nice we had a little uh, little reminisce about that uh lube I, I use the uh, the squirt sort of wax. Uh, found that's really useful in all weathers. Worked really well on this. Didn't really have to reapply it at all. Um, the, the you know the chain ran pretty smoothly up until the point I snapped it. Um, that's a different story. So that was good. And I had a little cloth with that just to obviously wipe it down if I needed to, etc. But that's just a little bit of maintenance in there. Other things I had in there. A little um, ratchet set. That's uh, that's quite good. Uh, I can show you that a bit more later. Um, more black tape why not and is there anything else in there and then i carried it also in there um, i've taken it out now it was like my power bank cables uh, and maybe a few other uh, odds and sods in there but that's, there's quite a lot of stuff that fits in there obviously quite weighty items i uh, found it's quite useful it sat nicely in the middle of the bike and uh, had no reissue, real issues with it being stored in that side Flipping the bag around then, um, you've got like a smaller compartment, it's just like a flat compartment, but again, this was quite useful. Uh, let's just get this one open. They're good zips, they're like, uh, I think they're the, the, the anti-freeze type zips. So things I've got in here then, I've got leftover, the remnants of um, purification tablets that I used. Uh, I'll get these out of the uh, the food that I eat. So uh, for, for, for me personally, I was using uh, military rations. 
um, because I source them through uh, obviously my job. Um, so yeah, I got them. Find them really handy uh, and keeps you safe and stuff with the with the filtration and that. Uh, antihistamine tablets in there for some reason. Don't know why they're in there, but they're in there. Uh, what else did I have in there? So I had some spare spokes uh, and the the nipples for them. Obviously important. You need to. I would recommend definitely taking spare spokes. Didn't need them, fortunately. I've got a few cable ties or plastic ties left. Um, I think I found these later on as I thought I'd run out, but uh, I got a few left there. I did take a um, massive wodge of them because I did think I might need more. Uh, and then in here, I've got a few, few. Let me see if I can dig them out. Well, here we go. This is, so there's my spare spare hanger, which I would have used if I could have fixed my chain, uh, but unfortunately I couldn't. So that's there. And I've got just like the remnants of brake pads and stuff left in there as well. And a few other little bits, but they're obviously worn down because I went through a couple of sets with all the descending and stuff you're doing. Anyway, the bag itself uh, from Outkit, fantastic piece of kit. Definitely recommend uh, that and 100% I would uh, use this again for multiple trips. Durable, strong, brilliant piece of kit. So yeah, great, great bag. Okay, so the next bag I've got then is my like my tail uh, fin bag. Um, I got this. I actually got this from uh, eBay. Uh, it's a company called Rock Bros. Uh, and I had a couple of their other bags. I had a frame bag and I, and I used the uh, top tube bag, which was uh, also really good. Um, Thirty-six pounds. This is. I used it in the run-up as well to um, the GB Duro. Find it was really good. Uh, I personally liked it. I mean, it's it's quite it gets narrow on this end. As you can see, it gets narrow, um, but there is like a, like a solid like plastic sheath inside, so it makes it quite rigid towards the front end. Mounts nicely to the the bike, um, and it has a, a foam uh, pad there just to stop any rub on your um, seat tube. Uh, so that's that's quite handy. Mounts really well. Doesn't swing about too much. It's got plenty of clips. I like that it's got the, the bungees on the top, which a lot of them do have. And it is waterproof, and it's been really, it's sort of been really rugged, really. Things I've got on this then, uh, I did eventually put my tracker onto the back, um, as you can see there, and it was sort of clipped under the, the straps. Uh, I only did that because I initially had it hanging off the front, uh, and it says obviously in the manual that it can affect GPS and, and stuff like that. It initially, it wasn't doing anything, but I found later on in the ride that actually it was uh, every now and again it would freeze my uh, Wahoo, uh, which was really weird. So a Wahoo would freeze, I'd have to stop it, start it. It was a bit of a pain, so I decided to just you know, mount it on the back um, and it sat there fine and there was, there was no real issues at all. Okay then, so in here then, um, I pretty much just kept uh, like my sleeping my sleeping system, warm jacket. Uh, I did I think have my emergency bivy bag in there for a little bit, but I might have moved it. Uh, and then any sort of, sort of really packable um, and stuff. It's got a obviously clips down, folds over. It's waterproof. It's like you know one of your dry bag, or lead type bag things that you roll down. Uh, you roll it down, Velcro shut. You push the air out of it, get it nice and tight. Should be a treat pulling the sleeping bag out. I haven't pulled it out since we got back. This is my sleeping bag. It smells all right. She's good. Um, so yeah, that's the uh, the sleeping bag I used. Um, I think it's a wrap, a wrap ignition two it's not yep yeah, yeah rally ignition two there we go it's not the uh i wouldn't say it was the smallest one or the lightest sleeping bag you can get but what it it's sort of um it, pack, it packs down smaller for me and what i found is it's actually really comfy uh and it's good uh, in all weathers uh, to be fair when i was sleeping and using this i found myself was quite warm i literally just stripped down as much as i could uh, and sleep in it um which you know was good then for getting air to your body etc so um i've definitely i probably won't change this i, I think you can sacrifice a lot of you know personally you can you know you can, you can travel light freeze at night if you want um i would rather sleep better recover more in the short period of time that i am uh, sleeping um that's just me personally hopefully then i you know i'd recover a bit better and then i'm able to perform a bit better the next day so that's that's my theory behind it so decent sleeping bag and we'll definitely use that again um for any sort of bike packing trips races etc but yeah i really enjoyed that comfy so also in there, I would also keep my um, down jacket. Uh, packs nice and small. It's, it's only a lightweight one. Um, I think it's a mount, mountain warehouse. 
I've got quite a few. I've got like quite a few big ones, extreme ones, and stuff like that. But this has actually been really good, and it was more than ample for that. Even in the um, sort of the colder, when it got a little bit colder in Wales, etc., I found that this was this was perfectly fine as long as I um, dressed myself appropriately. And that afterwards, got my wet kit. Then uh, that's that, that. That was that was fine. I'd also carry in the bottom of here. Then I mean, I use this. I've got one. Um, it's, it's a linen. A linen liner for that needs a wash for your um, sleeping bag. It's obviously designed to keep your sleeping bag clean. That I took it out because I actually found myself, like I said, too warm. Uh, so I did take it out, but that yeah, for the hell, that is going in the wash. Um, but yeah, it, it was useful, but um, I mean, it just it packs down small. It's like 16 pounds from Amazon, and they're there if you know for the colder temperatures. If you're going in sort of winter and you're camping while camping in winter, etc., then that's what they're designed for. Just get that extra bit of warmth that keeps your sleeping bag clean um, on the inside. So again, I, I would keep that. Um, you know, if I was going, if it was really, if I knew it was going to be really warm, depending on where I was, you know, I probably wouldn't bother taking it. Um, but for this, I took it just as a backup because I didn't know if it what the temperature was going to drop, etc. Um, why I was in Wales or, or Scotland for that matter. But um, yeah, other than that, um, that, that sort of packed down actually quite small. Uh, I, I still had spare space in there, but I didn't want to overload um, everything that was going over the back wheel. I tried to split my weight because I was very aware that I was going to have to carry a lot of food, etc., um, over the back. A lot of the weight was going over the back of the of the bike, so uh, I tried to balance that out um, so that I wouldn't risk blowing a spoke or you know burning my tire out too quickly uh, and all that. So that was that was my theory. Uh, whether that's the right thing to do, I, I personally think it is, and it also gives the handle at the front end. You know, it keeps that weight, some of the weight on the front end and made me actually a bit more confident with the steering and stuff. It wasn't light and bobbing around like when I'd done a few test runs and I had too much weight over the back. So I found that was that was quite useful. But yeah, Rock Bros, Rock Bros uh, tail bag, uh, eBay, 36 quid. Perfectly fine for um, anyone that wants to get into it. It uh, doesn't want to buy, you know, your, you know, your more expensive Apertura, um, Ortley bags, which are all fantastic bags. But if you're just looking to go and have a few uh, weekend adventures, then you can start with this sort of thing and see if you like it first before you maybe spend spend the big bucks um, and get that, that better kit. But th this did the job for me, um, and I will be using it again um, in the near future. So, yeah, great uh, great bag. Okay, moving on then. Um, so, obviously, with the change of rules and that, we had to carry all our own food, uh, etc. Um, so that obviously added a few extra... Uh, kilos to the bike and also the problem of you know where you're going to store it so i chose a pannier rack um one from uh, decathlon it's, it's it's fairly lightweight it just uh, sits over the, the the rear of my, my bike um you know your normal style style of pannier rack your little ball mounts stuff like that it wasn't particularly heavy not the lightest out there it's not your your tail fin or anything like that but it, it did the job and it was robust enough and um i could also strap other things to it like my, my spare tire that i carried the bags that came with it then with these um between um, pannier bags, uh, they are waterproof, so for that sense, they did a good job. Uh, and yeah, you can get a lot in them. Um, if if anything, you can probably get a bit too much in them. But so things I was carrying in here. Let's have a, a quick look inside. Let's see what I had. Still covered in more than stuff. So I keep my Grail filter. Again, I'll do. I'll maybe do a little talk about this uh, another time, but. I found this was really good, a uh, useful piece of kit. So I had that in, in one side, um, and I had I had rations, uh, sorry, my food split down between the back and also at the front. I split it down uh, into days and sort of the balance of the weight that way. Uh, that's just the roll from my front bag, which is I must have put in there when I thingy. Um, one of my bottles, but again, that would have been on the front of my bike. It's just been put in here for storage. Uh, so, the leftover food, dehydrated cheese, not ideal for just squeezing straight into your mouth. You definitely want to eat that with something else. Um, but that's the sort of size bag that I keep my food in daily, so I knew you know what I had per day. Uh, let's have a look what else is in here. Oh, a bit more food that's just dropped out. Ginger pudding in ginger sauce, lovely. I actually found they were really good, good a lot of calories in that. So that's like nearly 600 calories. Just in that little pudding there, and that plus you, you made meal plus hot chocolate in the evening. I found that was they were really nice, and it was something to look forward to as well, particularly obviously when warm. And 
just some bags and some straps left in there but mainly in there was carrying my food uh, and initially I was carrying my uh, change of clothes I don't know if everyone was was taking sort of spare clothes etc but for me personally uh, I would sort of go through what we call wet and dry drills um, in the evening as soon as whatever time it was that I was gonna uh, get to sleep I would strip out of my wet kit if I had enough water or water source there I'd give myself a quick wash over uh, and I'd put my dry kit on that way it'd be nice and warm uh, let the body recover and, uh, and then I'd eat my eat my food which I was obviously storing here in the in the bags the other one then feels like still a bit more still a bit more in it um, let's have a look that's the bag of rubbish so I cook then a lot of people take like um, metal mugs I had my jet boil so I could have in, in theory I could have used that as my, my, my cup but I chose a, a plastic cup it did have a lid on it but I lost it somewhere really gutted I lost it somewhere in Wales it must have popped off it must have hit something and popped off because it was clipped on um, and it was on the it was actually sat on the outside of my tail bag uh, nice and neatly um, clipped on as well but once I lost the top I just put it back in here because um, I don't see the point in letting all the muck and crap go into your uh, go into your mug and then you just you've got to clean that as well as you know other things particularly when water water is a premium the my jet boil then I keep that in one side so I've got like a Mark One jet boil. I've had this um, since 2008. Never changed the uh, the element on it. So that's still working. As you can see, it's the original one. Click it doesn't work. That's not an issue. Comes with um, obviously the legs there. They they clip out. So it's all nice and neat. So they clip onto the bottom of gas. Got your actual uh, cooker top. Um, my gas. There's a tiny bit left in that. I was thinking I was saving that for a brew, but um, I pretty much got to like day uh, eight on this eight nearly um, nine maybe on one can um, what sort of gram is that i think it's like a, a 250 or something anyway they, they reckon a week but i got maybe just over a week on that and that sits nice in the bottom there sets up really well it's all nice and compact uh, with a lighter um, i did have windproof matches just in case um however I found that was that was all right like that so yeah jet boil in there what else uh, again, this is, uh, that was my last day's food that unfortunately I didn't get round to because um, obviously I broke my bike, so that would have been that's what would see me into the last day. And the trowel, the racing collective, uh, it's a little a bamboo trowel. Um, leave no trace is one of their, their sort of mottos, and that includes obviously going to the going to the toilet. Um, there is like on rules you can look online to see how to dig uh, little trenches for yourself but that's, it's obviously very important that you, you have that you, you know you don't want to be uh, leaving any sign of yourself and obviously you know um, you know pooing in the open leaving it there surface laying as they call it landmines you don't want to be leaving them for people to find it's pretty, it'd be pretty disgusting so you got to respect other people respect um, you know respect the countryside um, you know and, and bury it and then take uh, any of the uh, rubbish with you which gets packed away so very important that you, you do that correctly so nice little thing for them although they didn't give it to me until I got down there so I'd already packed another trowel so I was carrying two trowels back up I was lucky because in each one of my um, when you get like a rash pack you always get uh, a little bit of paper so I had enough of that I had plenty of, I didn't have to ever worry about toilet paper or, or blow my nose oh here we go chain what's left of it we'll discuss that another day that's still upsetting me i've dropped me me light in there um i'll talk about that as well and the issues i had with lighting um but yeah i think the last things in here is just just a little bit of rubbish i did like a, a, a rubbish video for the racing collective last thing really in here is just my trowel which has needs to be put back together borrowed that from my daughter's uh, garden set i don't know if she wants it back um, probably not so nice little spare there and then my brevet card which is neatly put in here as well it's a bit a bit battered and stuff um, but just sort of tells you about about the rules leave no trace self-sufficient versus self-sustained um, and all that so that'll be getting framed and I'll be keeping that as a bit of memorabilia so yeah that's that's pretty much what I kept in there as I said kept my spare kit in there as well uh, I put that in a, in a separate dry bag 
um, because then when I could take that out, I could turn the bag inside out or wet kit on the on the reverse side. That way it was never wet in the, the inside. And I could use that as a as a pillow as well, just for that little bit of extra comfort uh, when I was sleeping. So that's my, my pannier bags. Um, yeah, I, I, I probably, I would, I would use them again. I think um, I'll... I'd like to invest in maybe uh, you know something a bit a bit cleaner, maybe a little bit smaller. I really like, I do like the look of the um, the tail fin ones with the, the extra mounts and stuff that you can get. Um, so you can use those um, anything cages. Um, but if you're needing to carry extra weight and stuff, those panniers um, absolutely brilliant. Did the job, no issue. Would would, would recommend just using them, um, and they're they're relatively inexpensive as well. So sort of coming around to the front of my bike then, um, I had. Like one of these roll things that clips on. Uh, I've had this one a while. Um, it's from uh, Ross Wheel. I think I got it from Amazon. And it has like a Velcro bit in there. The bag that comes with it is quite small though. Um, so for this, it wasn't really ideal because I needed to, um, I wanted to balance the weight out. So what I did is I used a, an old um, waterproof or lead bag. Uh, what size is this one? It's, it's a fair old size, this one. It might say it. So it's a 13 litre that. So it's quite large. Um, and what I put in here to start with then is I basically put um, three, well actually f nearly four days worth of food in there, plus like Haribo, plus marzipan uh, balls uh, and stuff like that, snack bars, rammed it all in there uh, to take some of the weight off the back because I didn't want to put all the food on the back, even though, you know, I'd like to have kept things in there, relevant places and had my, you know, camping stuff up the front, but it just made more sense to distribute the weight that way. That sat with inside there. I mean, this was okay. Um, it's, it's, it is your very basic entry level um, sort of roll for the front. It doesn't have any of the spaces, which would be nice to have. It sat in there fine. I did put extra straps on just to hold it so that the, the clips at the front didn't slip. Um, I will probably invest in a better front bag. Um, probably one that's just like complete with the spaces, uh, dual ends opening. Um, I would probably still use a dry bag for some of the kit that goes in there because if you're pulling things in and out and it's raining and that, then you know you don't want to get all your stuff that's in there if you've got camera stuff spare kit etc um, you don't want to get that that sort of wet but um yeah that's that's what i put up the front there uh, and that sat there for you know quite a long time before i actually touched it um and, and needed to dig into my food um on the front end even though i knew i had haribo and stuff in there you know, i wasn't ever sort of tempted um to, to you know to have that before um i needed to and the days ticked by but it was like a little tick off which was good when I finally had to open that bag and I was like, yes, brilliant, um, because I knew that I was so many days in uh, and I was quite a way up the country. So um, that was that was good. So that was that, that, that front bag there. So also on the front as well, um, I had my uh, sort of one person, uh, like it's like a two hoop bivy. It's not like your one hoop just over your head as, a, as a one at the rear as well. Uh, that there then, I got it from Amazon. Um, I can't remember the company. I'll, I'll have a look and I'll, I'll let you know. Maybe in the, the comments, I'll, I'll try and let you know. It's about 40-ish pounds. Perfectly waterproof, perfectly fine. Uh, the only thing I found was like a lot of things like this. I think I mentioned it on my Instagram was that it um, had a bit of condensation build up. Um, and I think it depends how you position it. So I am actually probably going to look at maybe getting an extra vent put on uh, from some guys um, that uh, live locally here. Yeah, I think that would definitely help. Um, one thing I found with the with the hoop bivy over it versus the tent was, particularly when we got to Scotland, midges everywhere, and, and anyone that's been up there will testify that there's absolutely millions, billions of midges constantly at you. So when I was up there and I got this out, it was out in, do my admin, quickly get in there, and I'd eat my food while I was inside it, which obviously in a one hoop, or well, two, two hoop bivy laid down is 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 not that comfortable. So I would use it again, but I also probably would invest in um you know a bit more of a sit up. A one person style tent you can get plenty of light ones out there it's just a case of looking around the market and seeing what there is but when it rained it was waterproof so i didn't get wet in there uh, it was comfortable enough it was light i think it's about half a kilo so it's not too bad it's not the lightest or the best out there um but it survived the gb duro um it did its job well uh, and again i'll i'll do a little video about that and post that uh, as well i also had my roll mat so sort of attached not packed very well right now because um, I've been sort of fiddling with it, but I have my roll mat packed on the front there. It's just a three-quarter inflatable one, and that was just a little bit of extra comfort. There's definitely lighter ones out there. This is from a company called OEX or something like that, OXE, or it's from Go Outdoors. Um, there's definitely smaller ones out there, but I, I, you know, a lot of my kit that I use is because it's stuff that I had um, 
from, from being in the military. Um, and I was just like, well, it does the job. It does job me there. I'll carry it. But again, I could have maybe saved weight in other places. Would use that BB gun. Well, Matt, yeah, probably use that again as well. Um, well, we'll use it again. So, very focal biscuit. But they, would, I would literally just strap them to the front with a couple of bungees, and they'd sit nicely just on top of that um, on bag, and it didn't really cause me any issues at all. Didn't affect the handling uh, of the bike. So, yeah, decent, decent bit of kit there. So, sort of moving on, I'm going to have to move over to, to the bike now, but for um, a couple of bags left on my bike, I've got um, like your feed pouch. Now, what I use for, for my feed pouch is um, always after a bargain, I, I looked around and I was like, brilliant, yeah, you know, the, the 30 odd pounds, uh, all these little uh, bespoke feed bags. And I was like, well, it's, it's pretty much just like a, a rock climbing short bag. This is exactly what I bought. I would get one on eBay um, for $5.99, something like that. Um, just bought a I just bought myself a um, a climbing bag, and you, you can if you can see it there. Uh, it's probably not the best image there it is. As you can see, um, I had like a, I had nuts and stuff inside uh, in there, and I just keep all sort of your food and everything in there. That was um, quite quite a handy bag to have, and I just strapped it on a couple of cable ties. Again. Um, I probably, you know, I might invest in a better one, but it, it, it did the job. Uh, please excuse my kitchen in the background, but yeah, that, that, that was okay. It, it held everything I needed to, and it's plenty, it's plenty big enough. It's plenty big enough for what I, what I needed it for, so it was useful. Um, actually, on the bike itself, then, you can see I sort of mentioned it before, is my um, Rock Bros uh, top tube bag. Uh, decent zip on it, it's like one of those anti-freeze uh, thingy zips. Got, uh, you can tuck it away up there uh, and all I kept in there mainly what I kept in there is a couple of like bars and other little bits um, but that was my um, converter from from a dynamo off the wheel I'll do again do a little talk about that when I sort of talk over my bike etc but um, that's from a company called Powerbug so that was me that was pretty much what I kept in the cable from there and most times it was either plugged into me my light my phone or or my wahoo um, which was obviously very important but um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it uh, for my for my bags um, uh, and what I sort of keeping in there. More than happy to go over some more um, kit and equipment uh, things and breakdown and all that. Obviously, I'm quite new to doing this. Um, happy to discuss um, you know more things. If you want to know about what how I broke my food down, work my calories out. Again, I'm happy to do a little video on that. If you need to know anything about the, the kit and everything I was wearing, happy again to do that. Please just let me know in the, in the comments below uh, what you'd like me to talk about. Um, and I'll keep trying to build the content for you guys um, and give you it from sort of the ground level, really. Um, I'd sort of call myself an entry level, um, you know, ultra endurance uh, cyclist. You know, always looking to improve, uh, you know, and keep moving forward uh, by doing this. And I enjoy doing it. Um, I enjoy giving these, uh, pushing these videos out to you, to you guys out there. Um, try to keep you smiling, uh, and you can sort of see um, what I, what I was dealing with uh, from from my perspective. Uh, and hopefully, it might give you a few ideas, uh, and we can share that together. Uh, and we'll just uh, keep moving forward with it. But yeah, but that's it for now. That's my bags. Uh, that's what I was carrying. Um, you know, there is a few more bits and pieces here and there. So please let me know if you want me to discuss more of it. Um, I'll do a video on me on me bike, um, you know how it actually broke and all that, um, you know, oh, sorry, how I broke it, should I say? Um, and I'll go over how it was set up uh, and all that, uh, and yeah, and we'll discuss uh, we'll discuss that in the future. But finally, then just want to say uh, thank you again uh, for watching and listening to me uh, ramble on about my bags and that. Um, I'll have a few more videos uh, coming up as I've just mentioned. I want to give a shout out actually to. Um, the guys at Freaking uh, Cycling, uh, they've been really good They're offering me uh, tips and advice uh, as well. So that's that's always cool. Um, really appreciate that. So if you you want to hit me up on uh, Instagram as well, uh, Airborne Elvis Seven, um, that's me. Uh, I'm always putting videos up there as well. But thank you and uh, stay tuned for another video.